So now that we are going to start implementing the code for the playwright driver itself. So basically we are going to create a class file, which is going to be responsible for instantiating the playwright object. If you remember all these days, we have been using everything in just one single class file, like creating the playwright code over here, the browser and the page instance. And then from there we are starting to do the navigation identifying the page and stuff that's what we did all these days but now that we are going to change a bit a little bit we are going to make sure that we are going to make this code as reusable and the way we are going to make it reusable is to write a bit of coding a standard like a coding pattern so that we could reuse this code across the spec flow like creating one object and then using it across the project so in order to do that we are going to use what is called as a driver pattern of spec flow which is going to be very very important to understand before you even start implementing the code so i have already discussed about the driver pattern so you can just search for driver pattern like that and you will see that there is something called as understanding driver pattern for automation testing i have created that in my youtube channel you can go ahead and watch there or you can even go to the spec flow documentation over here where you can learn about the driver pattern. So basically the driver pattern is simply an additional layer between your step definitions and your automation code. And this is something which will help you create like a driver which can be used across all the different pages. So you create one simple uh, like playwright page driver or whatever driver and then you use that driver object to drive all your automation code. So you can even learn about these things uh, which is mentioned in other documentations in 2015, something like that. So this is exactly what we are gonna be basically using over here for our code. I'm gonna be attaching that particular link in our course. You can go ahead and watch there in the YouTube video which I was talking about, or you can just search for driver pattern and you will see my video directly there. Well, as that said, for the driver pattern to start working with, we are going to be basically creating some of the objects over here itself. So, but even before going there, let's first of all, try to copy some of the code that we have written before, which is from here. So you see that this is the code, which is going to be responsible for creating the page of the playwright. So I'm going to copy that. And then you can create a method over here as public async of task and I'm going to say I page as the return type and you'll understand why I'm trying to do that. So let me also import the missing references which is from the playwright and then I'm going to say initialize playwright over here something like this. So this is the method which is going to be responsible for instantiating the playwright object for us. So let me try returning the new page object over here. You see that now this is the code which is going to be creating or initializing the playwright for us. So all these days we have been just rewriting the same code again and again, in all the different methods like test methods. But now that we wanted to make a reusable component so that we can use it across all of our spec flow feature files. So that's the whole idea. So it's more like a bit of a small framework, but it's not a framework by the way. All right. Well, as I said, this is going to be the initialized playwright. And once we have this initialized playwright, then I need to access this particular uh, playwright page from across all my tests. So the way I'm going to be doing it in the driver pattern world is I need to expose one of the property which will let me access that particular page object. So that's something I could do using what is called as a private. And I'm going to say a read only task of i page let me create that and I'm, because this is a private object i'm just going to create a underscore page and then i'm also going to create a private sorry and then i'm actually going to create a constructor here where i'm going to say underscore page is equal to initialize playwright something like this so this is what I wanted to do over here. So you will notice that now that I have created the initialized playwright here, over here. So if I call the driver object, then it is going to automatically going to call the constructor, which is going to call the initialized playwright. But still, we have to access the page property from our test code where I could able to perform like navigating to the URL or clicking the buttons and filling the entry details and stuff. So in order to do that, I'm going to create what is called as a property here. 
something like this. And within this property, I'm gonna say I page, and this I page is gonna be called as page, where I'm going to say in the Lambda expression that I wanted to access the page dot result. So the way I'm asking the result is because this is a task and in order to resolve the task, we need to use the result property. So if you just try to use just the page, something like this, you will see that you get an error here because it says it cannot even convert the system dot threading dot task to I page. So in order to convert that, you need to use the result keyword in C sharp. And once again, I'm not gonna go deep into the C sharp asynchronous code because that's not something the scope of this course. But as you can see, this is how you could work with the asynchronous code in the C sharp world. And the ID is smart enough to tell me that, see that this public is not something you need to worry about. Just try to make it like private because you're just accessing it from within this particular class file. And we also need to make few more changes in this particular driver. Basically, once the playwright starts executing, I also need to close or dispose the driver object. So the way I could do it is I can call the I disposable of the C sharp world where you can implement a missing method, which is gonna call a dispose method. And over here, I can close the browser, which is nothing but the playwright browser, once the execution is completed. So how do I do it? Well, you can see that the browser has been closed within this particular method using this using keyword, which is wrong. So we have to not just close the browser within this particular method itself. So in order to do that, I'm also gonna call one more uh, variable here, I'm gonna call this as browser, and I'm gonna make this as a nullable type so that even if it is null, it doesn't close it directly. Uh, and then over here on the declaration, I can just say underscore browser, something like this. And this is gonna be underscore browser as well. Well, since we have the browser object right now, I can then close or dispose the object using underscore browser, close async, something like this, right? So now that the object has been closed, we can also reduce the line of course over here if we just use the expression bodied member like one liner. And similarly over here, I can use the expression bodied member as well. And if I just run this, it's just gonna run a page cleanup for me. And you can see that everything has been cleaned up, which is cool. All right, so now that our code is more neat and much, much better for us to work with the playwright driver itself. The next step is to use this playwright driver within our feature file so that we could able to start using them for our test execution. We'll see how to do it in our next lecture.